what would you do if you knew it was your last night with your friends? I've had lots of last nights. I volunteer on a two week beach mission every year. Uh, the residential team come together for just over a fortnight. And on our last night together, we hold a, a huge Cayley for Port St. Mary. And then the team all go back to the team house and we just chill together. We know that we won't see each other for a year, maybe more. And having had an incredible time together, all 60 plus of us, Naturally, we break into smaller groups and those groups have some beautiful, deep, meaningful conversations. The same happened at the end of my uni course. Not necessarily on the very last night, but in, in pubs and clubs all across North Wales where I was, groups of us talked slowly and honestly with each other. It's happened at the end of gap years. It's happened when friends move away. It's happened when jobs finish. It's happened when festivals end. And it happens with increased poignancy when I've had the privilege of sitting with someone who I know will be passing away very, very soon. Somehow then even the trivial parts of our conversation hang with greater weight and our final conversations, they just remain in the corner of our consciousness for months, and sometimes years to come. What would you do if you knew it was your last night with your friends? On his final night, before his arrest and trial, Jesus had a meal with the small group of followers that he called his disciples. All four gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, they, they all write about this final meal. In the first three, Matthew, Mark and Luke, we get details of what his followers call the Last Supper. John instead focuses on the words Jesus spoke in that intimacy of the final meal. John spends a quarter of his whole gospel account at this final meal. He invites us to be right in there with the others. He invites us in to sit with Jesus and hear him give this, this poignant, personal, deliberate, private, final words. You can almost smell the roast lamb and the herbs. You can almost hear the clink of the glasses and, and feel the heat of the evening. So over five chapters, Jesus begins to speak about what will happen after he's been arrested and executed and raised back to life. He talks about God sending someone else, the one who will be exactly like Jesus but as spirit, the spirit of God himself, coming to be with, with every believer. The fruit of knowing Jesus will be to know the spirit of God pitching his tent inside us, planting his roots inside us. Jesus talks about those with the Spirit doing greater things than he's been doing. He talks about those people seeing prayer answered. Those people will, will know they have the Spirit of Jesus unshakably within themselves. They, they will have life abundantly flowing through them. They'll know God's heartbeat for the world. They'll know God's peace. They'll be guided by that Spirit into knowing truth at a deep personal level. They'll be unified as one and they'll experience something truly mysterious, something called mutual indwelling. Jesus describes a new way of being alive where we are, are planted in Jesus and Jesus is planted in us. Both 
living together, feeling the rhythm of each other's lives and, and somehow living in this perfect harmony. So when Jesus begins to talk about fruit at this meal, it's this wider conversation that he's talking into, that the fruit that will grow from believers, if you look through this conversation, are these things. Can you imagine being there? I mean, sitting around the food with Jesus as he talks and hearing these things, hearing that in the very core of you, God is gonna send his spirit to come and pitch his tent to put his roots down, never to leave or be uprooted, that the fruit of this new relationship with God will be to see greater things than Jesus has been doing. The fruit will be that answered prayer. The fruit will be that abundant life. The fruit will be to feel God's heartbeat. The fruit will be to know God's peace. The fruit in you will be to guide you into truth. The fruit in you will be to be unified as one, to experience this mutual indwelling. So here's a tiny section of that evening's final discussions. Let it wash into you, let it wash around you and over you. Let these words challenge and inspire you to place yourself right there with the other disciples, listening to Jesus speaking these words to you. This is what the death of Jesus, that substitutionary death, you know, my world and his world colliding and transforming. And then his forgiveness coming through the resurrection. This is what this means. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes those branches that aren't producing fruit, while the branches that do bear fruit, he expertly prunes so that the next year their crop is even greater. All of you here are clean, right in your core, because you have listened to my words. So now plant yourself in me, just as I am going to plant myself in you. You know that branches cut off from the vine can't produce anything. Listen to me, the same is true for you. Unless you plant yourself in me, where will your fruit come from? Your branches and the vine is me. Anyone who roots themselves into me and allows me to be rooted into them will not fail to produce fruit. Apart from this organic spiritual reality, you can grow nothing. Whoever uproots themselves, they, they sever this life bringing connection and they, they sever themselves from their own life. Their fate is the same as a dead branch ready for a bonfire. But not so. Not so with anyone who roots themselves in me and allows me to root myself into them, allowing my spiritual sap to flow freely through every part. Those people will have a holy confidence to know that whatever they pray for, it will be done. Yes, this mutual organic relationship shows all of God's goodness and power. Yes, you become God's shop window to the world when this fruit grows all around you and you become my true disciples. So may we sit at Jesus' feet and hear these words spoken to us. To us, may our spirits open up more and more to this mutual rootedness, this planting fully in the soil of Jesus as Jesus plants himself fully in the soil of our lives. May this life-giving spiritual sap flow through into us in order for us to see the fruit of that new relationship with God. See those greater things, that answered prayer, that abundant life, to, to feel God's heartbeat, to know God's peace, to be guided into truth and to be unified as one.